Hey, it's the Shane Point to the Word. I'm going to be starting a new topic today. Um, it's called, I'm a Christian, now what? Um, so basically what I mean by that, a lot of people, like a lot of testimonies will just be like, okay, you know, this is my past, this is my history, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I found out, you know, what a bad person I was, you know, repented, and then I became a Christian, and then they tell a little bit, you know, about the changes that will happen, but then kind of just stop, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I was, you know, I kind of wanted to think, you know, and be proactive, because, uh, you know what I mean, like, it's not, there's so much more after that, like, yes, you know, being saved is, you know, incredibly important, and, you know, it's why we share the gospel, so, um, but honestly, like, after I was saved, I, I didn't really know, you know, what, what, do I, what do I do now? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, kind of make this, uh, you know, a few videos. I don't know how many videos it'll be, but, um, yeah, I just want to, you know, start this topic because I think it's very important, you know, because I feel like, you know, a lot of people just... You know, they aren't instructed, you know, what now, you know what I mean? They just kind of, you know, run in different directions and, you know, don't really know what to do. You know, it's basically, oh, well, guess I should find a church, and, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I guess my advice for whatever it's worth, um, if I could, you know, do it all over again kind of thing would be just stop and start reading God's Word. Like, buy a Bible. I prefer King James uh, Version personally, but I'm in no way telling you, know, you guys what to read. Um, I, I would avoid uh, things like, you know, the message and, you know, different paraphrases like that. Like, I don't know, like... To me, the King James Version is, like, really easy to remember, and, you know, it's a little difficult at first, you know, these and thous kind of thing, but, uh, yeah, I just get a Bible and get into it and ask God for, you know, understanding, and, you know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will teach you, you know, and you don't need anyone else to teach you, and, you know, when, when I was saved, I, I just you know, download so many sermons, and you can easily become deceived if you don't, you know, build a foundation on Jesus first, and that's why I would really, you know, invite you guys to, you know, read your Bibles and, and get that solid foundation first, because when I started, I was, I read a little bit, but, you know what I mean, like, it wasn't much. And I was easily deceived in a lot of things. Like, I, there's, a, I praise God that I got out of, certain, you know, certain circumstances and, you know, denominations and stuff. But, yeah, I was really deceived. Like, um, there's, like, Seventh-day Adventism that I almost, you know, I was really involved with. Like, I never went to a church. I, I, I did a lot of, you know downloading sermons and, you know, from a distance, kind of, you know, seeing what, you know, these places are all about, rather than, you know, sitting in a church, so, yeah, I'd really recommend, for what it's worth, just gaining your Bible and building that foundation, because, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, and that's smart to, you know, build a house, you know, on a solid foundation, rather than, you know, sinking sand. And, you know, reading your Bible and getting that foundation is very important. So I would really recommend that. So, you know, get in, in your word and build that solid foundation. Otherwise, you can, you can easily be deceived. Um, and then, you know, from there, like, you'll start learning, like, buzzwords and stuff. Um, like, for instance, like... There's a lot of different denominations out there that I, I wouldn't recommend, like, you know, Catholicism I, I would not recommend, um, 
things like you know apostolic um, Pentecostal I wouldn't recommend and like those are just a couple that you know Seventh-day Adventism I would not recommend uh, Jehovah's Witness Mormons those are probably you know four or five I would definitely recommend to stay away from um, because they're they can be very off base I won't throw all Pentecostal in because you know what I mean, like, I, I don't feel like, you know, all Pentecostals are going to hell. I, I'm not, you know, that's, I, that's what I'm not saying. I, I'm not saying that, but um, a lot of those, you know, religions I just, you know, brought up are, you know, not in line with scripture. They all, you know, basically teach a, a different Jesus. Um, so... And that's, you know, what the Bible says, uh, I believe in uh, 2 Corinthians um, 11, verse 4, uh, that says that, that, you know, there's another Jesus, so, um, I'll actually read it, I got pulled up. Um, so it says, for if he that come preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which uh, ye have not accepted, you might... Uh, well bear with him so there's a different gospel there's a different Jesus and there's a different spirit out there and so yeah I wouldn't recommend those churches or those religions um, but really just get grounded in your word because then you'll start learning buzzwords and you know things like that that you know it'll you know it, it, and ask God for uh, discernment and um, you can really avoid these things um, and cause yourself, <laughs> you know, and not not cause yourself rather a lot of, you know, heartache and trouble. Um, because, yeah, I, I was, you know, involved in some of these things and, you know, it, it's a good learning experience, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm thankful for it, but, you know, uh, all in all, you're, you know, you're wasting time. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't personally get involved in that. Uh, if I were you guys, just, you know, stick to the Bible. That You, know, you can't go wrong with that. Um, even, like, because back then, I was going, like, you know, through the Bible, like, you know, different, like, sermons, like, people, you know, verse by verse. Um, I was going through that, and I'm like, well, you know, it's like reading the Bible. So, I, I find we all try to substitute the Bible in some way, and that really you know, throws us off. Like, I, 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 I've i listened to so many sermons, I, and, and I, I kick myself because, you know, you you start getting a different lens that you look out of. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if you're involved in, you know, Jehovah's Witness, for, you know, uh, example, if, if you were involved in that for like 10 years and got out of it, and you start reading the Bible, you know what I mean? You're going to see it through, you know, that lens, that Jehovah's Witness lens. And so it's really important just to read the Bible and get that foundation as step one, then move on to the next step. Like, I, I can't recommend that any more. Like, I, I didn't do it, and, you know, I kicked myself because I, I was deceived in so many ways. Um, but yeah, you'll start, you know, hearing buzzwords, you'll hear certain phrases that these people use and, you know, it'll, it'll red flags will pop up and it'll be, you know, you'll have that discernment as long as you pray for it. And so, yeah, definitely step one, you know, getting your word and, you know, I, I'm repeating that so much, but it's so important and, you know, uh, learn to pray um, you know, spend that time with God, that's so incredibly important, because, um, yeah, I feel like right away, once you, you're saved, like, you want to do a few things, like, different things, like, for instance, I want to hold on to it, I, I didn't want to tell anyone, I just want to be like, oh, I'm saved, you know, I'm, you know, it's like, selfish, like, all right, you know, uh, good for me, I'm, I'm saved now, and, you know, you want to spread the gospel, you want to tell people, you know, this good news that you've just received. 
And, you know, another thing is I wanted to run before I learned how to walk. And, like, I started teaching right away, and, like, that's, you know, some you, you want to learn. You, got, you have to have that foundation first because I started going on Facebook and, like, you know, tried being a teacher or something. And I was, like, mixing up people's, like, names. Like, I was telling a story, like, uh, in the Bible. Uh, I, I remember it, you know, still. Like, I, was, I said, yeah, and Jesus said this, and some guy, like, commented. He's like, no. Like, John the Baptist said that. And I'm like, like, I didn't even check it. Like, I just, you know what I mean, w went through it and wasn't even checking my work. And I was just, you know what I mean? Like, so you really need to learn how to walk before you learn how to run. Um, I'm on a treadmill, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, it's really important to get, get those, you know, first two steps. You have to complete those. You, you can't, you know, skip those steps. In, in my opinion, uh, you know, and get, you know, you can't go to step five before you, you know, go through steps one and four. You know what I mean? So I'd really recommend that. And I, I'll I'll finish off with one. A story. Um, so I had a son. Uh, well, I still, you know, I, I, I have a six-year-old, and I, I, I didn't like forgive my dad um, for the longest time, and I was like trying to find, like I was trying to use the Bible to like, like, uh, basically get my way with something. Like I was trying to, you know, twist the Bible to my. You know the way I want to, you know, manipulate and force something, and so I mean by that is like, my dad and I like, we're having like a falling out, and I, I, I don't know, I, I just, I, I wanted, to, I wanted to like basically hurt him, and, and what I mean by that like emotionally, like I wanted to keep my son away from my dad, as like, you know, a way to hurt him. And I, I tried to go through the Bible and try to find a way, to, you know, to basically find, you know, oh, I'm right, you know, see, I got, I found a verse right here that says, you know, I'm right, and I couldn't do it. And, it's, and the Bible says, I should have pulled it up, I apologize, but some to the effect of, you know, where you can live, uh, I, I think it says, like, live live reasonably with all people or something like that. Like, you know, you know basically, you know, to, you, you can live to the best of your ability, you know, live, you know, well with all people kind of thing. I, I wish I should have pulled the verse up. I apologize, but and maybe I'll try to find that verse for next time. But anyway, I finally found that verse. And I'm like, I, I can't do that. I can't pull this off. Like, I, I need to, you know, forgive my dad and, you know, just get along with him. And now my dad and I have a very good relationship. And so that, like, that's the, these are things you can expect. Like, if, if you've, you know, listened to, you know, my testimonial on here, um, or if you haven't, you know, uh, find the, that playlist... You know, these are things you can, you know, that change, you can expect, you know, there's, there's things that, you know, Jesus will, you know, change in you, and that's one of them, like, you'll start forgiving other people that you never thought you would, and you'll start restoring relationships with people that you, you thought was done with, and so yeah, I'll end it there, but yeah, like, these are things that, that will change, like, if you are genuinely born again, and God saves you. Like these are things that you can you know, you can expect to change. So I'll start up there and I hope you guys have a great day. But hey, this is Shane Point to the Word. Um, this will be uh, part two of uh, after salvation. Uh, what now? Uh, so I did pull up that verse um, that I was talking about. If you guys remember, um, I was uh, you know uh, talking about my dad and how um, you know I was trying to find excuses not to like, you know, forgive him and do the right thing. And I was trying to take my kid away from him and basically like, you know, punishing him, uh, my dad. And looking back at that now, like I, it's crazy that I even tried to, you know, pull that off. 
but um, yeah, I did find that verse. It's from Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 18. And it says, if it be possible, as much as lie, uh, you know, li- lies in you, uh, live peaceably with all men. So if it be possible, you know, as much as lies in, you know, in you, live, you know, peaceably with all men. So, like, that verse really convicted me, and, <laughs> like, you know, I'm looking for all these verses, like, and that, I saw that one, and I'm like, all right, you know, not gonna work, so... Yeah, I and like I said, you know, now, you know, my dad sees my kid, you know, we, we have a good relationship, so, and, you know, I said that, you know, these are things that you guys can expect when you are, you know, born again and, you know, saved by the grace of God uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, just, uh, you know, a couple verses, in case you guys don't know, um, you know, the gospel is... 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. And that's how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day. And also, you know, a couple things that go in, you know, along with that. Uh, Romans 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 9. Now, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that, like, ties in with the last one. And Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, uh, For by grace have you been saved by faith, and that not of yourself is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man boast. So, um, you know, I just want to give you guys those verses. Um, but yeah, just continuing on, you know, I'm saved, now what? So, this is my experience, how, like... When I was an, like, you know, atheist, agnostic, whatever, um, I was always, like, s- like super skeptical of, like, anything. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, I was, like, always on guard. And I don't know why, but when I became a Christian, like, all my guard, like, dropped. And, like, it's weird because, um, I don't know, like... I just, you know, looked at other, you know, you know, preachers or, you know, whatever, and would just, you know, totally, you know, believe anything they said because, you know, I, oh, they're of God, or, you know what I mean? So, I, yeah, the, all my guard, I, I became totally naive in everything, and I don't know, I don't understand why. Like, I don't know if that's with other people, too, um, but yeah, so, like, uh, you know, and the Bible talks about having discernment. And that's really important, and that's something to definitely you know pray for, and you know ask God to give you. Um, and that has really helped me out because, like now, you know, on YouTube, like you know, if I'm listening to something, you know, now that I have that foundation of Jesus Christ, you know. And I, you know, I've read the Bible and I need to continue doing so. Like, it's, you're never, you know, done, you're never finished. You know, it's like, oh, I read the Bible, you know, now, you know, check. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like, you always, you know, keep wanting to read that. Um, But yeah, like, now that I see that, like, you know, certain videos, like, I, I praise God and thank God for it. But, like, you know, I'll hear like certain words or phrases being used and I'll know, oh, you know, they're probably in, you know, this camp, you know, kind of denomination. So, you know, keep that in mind. So like, for instance, I was at, uh, a good example of this, uh, just happened yesterday. Um, I was listening to a testimonial of a girl and she's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with, you know, a certain sin and I'm like, and, you know, she's saying, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I'm still struggling with this sin, and here's some things that you can, like, do to take your mind off of it. It was actually, you know, pornography. And um, so if you guys have listened to um, my testimony, like, um, and you can go to my playlist if you haven't. Um, but, yeah, if you listen to my testimony, like, um, that was one of the first things that I stopped doing, like, uh, you know, all, all credit to God. Um, 
yeah, Jesus totally, you know, delivered me from that. And I stopped watching uh, porn. Like, literally, like, the, you know, first day. And so this girl, and, and I understand, like, you know, not everyone's, you know, the same. Like, oh, you know, porn's going to be the first to go, just like with me. I, I, I don't mean to say that, but, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I think there's, I believe there's certain things that, you know what I mean? Like, they'll just fall off, you know, like... You're a new creation. Like you don't want to do the things. You know, you know. It's like the Bible says. You know, you're not of this world. You know, be not. You know, like the world. You know, you're, you know, be set apart, kind of thing. So, yeah. So back to this uh, girl uh, the testimony. You know, she's saying. You know, how how she's dealing with it, and you know, she's like, you know, giving all these examples of like, oh well. He, Here's some tips on how you can distract yourself from doing And I'm like, what? And so, like, what I hear from that is, oh, you know, here's some, uh, you know, do works. Like like I said, that Ephesians chapter 2, like, you know, not of works, less I am boast. Like, to me, that sounds like, oh, here's some tips and tricks to, you know, distract yourself from not watching porn. Or, you know, if, if you ever feel that urge, you know... You know, do do your own work and try to, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, what are you talking about? And so, uh, another, like, the, the buzzword that, um, and phrases that she was using, you know, were kind of, you know, putting red flags in my head. And the one that was, like, you know, blatant, obvious, that she said is, Yep, I'm a Christian, and I'm actually in the church of, you know, Latter-day Saints, and so I'm a Christian, and <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay, so you're a Mormon, you know what I mean? So, and there's a, so much uh, wrong with Mormonism, um, you know, just like, you know, the Prophet Joseph Smith, Prophet jo Joseph Smith, like, you know, he had this angel Moroni or something, like, come to him, and... I don't know, there's, oh, there's a lot wrong with it, like, um, yeah, there's, uh, I was actually looking into it, and, and the same girl, actually, um, she said that, uh, like, she wanted to have an eternal marriage, and I'm like, eternal marriage? And so, like, uh, I, I should have pulled up the verse, I'll probably <laughs> do the same thing again, like, oh, next video, I'll try to get that verse for you guys, but, um, yeah, like, the Bible says that, you know, you're not, you know, there, there's not going to be marriage in heaven, so, like, the Bible literally says that, and, uh, Jesus says that, actually, and so, <laughs> I'll have to remember next time to pull that up, but, yeah, I'll, I'll end it there, but, yeah, like, I just want to, you know, say, like, you know, please pray for discernment, like, you know, you guys will start, you know, learning, like, you know, buzzwords and phrases and stuff. And then, you know, these red flags will, you know, come out. And, you know, you'll, you know, take pause and, you know, just, you know, kind of, uh, you know, think on these things. So I'll cut it there. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Hey, this is Shane Points to the Word. Uh, this is part three of I'm a Christian, now what? Um... So last time I was talking about that one girl, uh, about her, uh, the Mormon, about her, like, testimony against, like, you know, tips and tricks to, <laughs> you know, not, you know, watch porn or whatever. So, um, she was mentioning how, um, she was looking, like, to get the eternal marriage which is part of, like, the Mormon's doctrine and all that, so I wanted, uh, to get those verses for you guys, um, so this comes from, uh, Matthew 22, I'll probably start in verse 19, or I'm sorry, uh, 29, I think, yeah, so these guys were, uh, uh asking Jesus, um, I, 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 I assume they, like, just made up a story, because, I don't know, it's, yeah, like, if you read the whole context, it's, I don't know, kind of, like, nonsensical, so, yeah, they're asking Jesus, um, you know, uh, starting in chapter, tw uh, in Matthew 22, I'll actually start in verse 28, 
So they're asking, uh, therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? They're saying how like seven guys, like, you know what I mean? Like, like married her. For they all had her, and Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, um, uh, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I keep forgetting... Uh, to actually get my verses down in this series, um, yeah. So this, like, you know, this girl has this doctrine, and you know that that's, you know, I mean, the whole series is, you know, I'm a Christian now. What, like, it's it's if you don't get that solid foundation, it's easy to fall into these different, you know, denominations or you know cults even that um, believe in around Jesus because. You know, basically, this lady who, you know, has these tips and tricks to, you know, try to distract herself, like, it's, it's an awful lot of work to, you know, I mean, it reminds me, you know, of the world, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, if, if, if a person of the world wanted to do that, like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that, that there's no power in God in that. And so, yeah, I, I don't know, in a nutshell, like, it's, the, the, the power of God is what delivers us from this, and, you know, just as, you know, an unbeliever, if, if, if he or she, you know, didn't want to watch porn, he or she would do their, you know, work on their own strength, on their own power to not do it, and this is basically what, you know, this girl's saying, you know, uh, in, in Mormonism, so, you know, what's the difference between a Mormon and a person of the world doing it. There's nothing, you know, there's no difference. You know, they're trying to use their own strength, their own power, not God's power. So, and that's why you need to, you know, look out for these kind of cults because, like, why would, you know, as a Christian, why would you join something that there's no power in, you know what I mean? So, you'd rather be delivered, you know, through Jesus Christ and... You know, yes, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying, you know, like, there's not, you know, temptation, like, I honestly think, like, porn, um, really, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it really molds you into, like, you know, checking girls out kind of thing, you know what I mean? So, like, there is, like, I, I do, you know, pray to myself, like, um, or not pray to myself, I, inside I pray, I pray to God, um, and I, I pray to him, and I, I ask, you know, please help me, you know, flee fornication, or, you know what I mean, like, and the reason I say fornication is because Jesus said that if you even look upon a woman to lust, you know, that's, you know, you know, like adultery, you know what I mean, so, you know, you, you sin in your heart, you know, that's just as bad as the act, so, and yeah, I mean, I, I pray against, you know, stuff to, you know, not, if, if I ever feel a temptation, yeah, I, I, I pray within myself, is what I was trying to say earlier, I'm like, why did I say that, um, I, I pray within myself, I pray to God, uh, for that, so I'm not saying, like, you know, there'll be no temptation, but, I don't know, like, like, I personally, since, like, Jesus has delivered me, I've never went back to porn. Like, I've never, you know what I mean? I've never, on my phone, on my, you know, laptop, nothing. Like, just nothing at all. So, anyway, I'm getting all past that. So, kind of getting off topic. Um, so, yeah, the, you want to get grounded on Jesus, um, and, you know, get in the Word, pray that the Holy Spirit would teach you, and then, um, you know, constantly pray, and, you know, this isn't just, you know, one time a day, or, you know, you know, dur during night time, or, you know what I mean, like, um, you know, sitting down for dinner or something, like, 
and also, you know, and, and not repetitive prayers too, like, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, or come Lord Jesus, be our guest, you know, blah, 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 blah. like, <laughs> it's all, you know, it's mindless, it's, and, and Jesus talked about that, and I guess I'll continue the tradition of not having a verse on me, because I just, you know, thought of that, um, yeah, so, I'll probably pull that verse up next time, um, and yeah, so, like, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, let not your, you know, you, you, you say this, it's like vain repetition, like, it's, it's mindless, you know, robotic, you know, kind of, I don't know, like, and once you've done that, or said the same prayer, like, and, I, and I've caught, like, um, like my son in this, like, my six-year-old son, he, he'll pray, you know, which is good, and, but he'll kind of say, like, the same words in the same, you know, sequence, and he'll catch himself, uh, and, you know what I mean, like, and he'll be like, oh, uh, you know what I mean, and that's the mindlessness of it, like, so, you know, when you pray to God, be very, you know, focused and, you know, not in, like, a trance kind of thing, so, you know, to really be, like, keep your mind active, um, that's some advice I can give there, but yeah, I mean, and you're not just, I mean, first, you're not doing these, you know, mindless prayers, his repetition prayers, but, uh, or repetitious prayers, but you're also, you know, praying, like, you know, constantly, um, like, and I, I don't know, I, I find myself, like, praying, you know, you know, like, little prayers throughout the day, and I, I, I'm by no means, you know, a standard, I'm just trying to, I don't know, like, get some, you know, like, advice out there for, you know, any new Christians out there, because I don't really think they're, you know, there is a really a guide out there, like, I mean, obviously, you know, the Bible, you know, if you, you know, read that and pray, you know, the Holy Spirit teach you, like, that's your ultimate guide. And, you know, relying on God, that's your ultimate guide. But, I mean, as far as, like, I don't know, like, people pointing others in, you know, the right direction, like, you know, I'm sure there's a few sources out there, but, like, when I was in your guys' shoes, I, I didn't know what to do. And so... I just went to different teachers and was really, you know, led astray and, and in, uh, you know, different cults and stuff. And I praise God that he got me out of there. Um, but I guess another thing, you know, then, yeah, enters the conversation, you know, a church. Um, and I would say once you got that final foundation of Jesus, like once you finally got that, and you, like, you don't, you're not going to know all the answers, but you're going to know what to look for and what not to look for in a church. And, you know, in a, in a church building, like, you know, there's going to be, you know, little things that, yeah, you know, you, you may not agree with a certain, you know, teaching or, you know, belief, but, you know... If stuff is minimal, you know, that's different, you know, like, you can, you know, have grace, and, you know what I mean, like, and, you know, some people's, you know, their, their little teachings, they change, you know, after a while, too, so, yeah, I would, you know, recommend, you know, really, um, and, like, for me, I, 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 will, like, visit, you know, church buildings from afar, like, you know, in this day and age, 2022, like, there's, you know, a lot of live streams, or, you know, they record their, you know, messages, so, you, you know, you don't have to invest too much, um, uh, to, you know, look into these things, and yeah, after a while, you know, if you're interested, you know, then you can feel free to go, you know, to a certain building or whatever, and and like I said, like, this is just, you know, different things that I'm thinking of, you know, that, you know, maybe I wish I would have, you know, ha you know, heard, 
you know, seven years ago. And that's why I'm making this. And um, I've noticed a lot of, and it's not always the case, but I've noticed a lot of the bigger, you know, churches, mega churches kind of thing, like, they're usually off. Like, they're usually, and, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all, but I, I've noticed that, you know, first, their, their doctrine is off, and, you know, their certain teachings are off, and it's usually, you know, um, you know, based on money or, you know, what you can get out of it, and, um, they can get out of you, <laughs> so, I don't know, bigger churches, I, I tend to, you know, stay away from, you know, not only that, but, you know, I mean, they have so much overhead and upkeep, you know what I mean, so, it's going to be a temptation to, you know, get those funds somewhere, um, but secondly, too, you know, there's not really any, you know, fellowship there, you know what I mean, like, you're not gonna, you know, how, how, how are you gonna, you know, if you go to a, you know, a church building and they have, you know, 10,000 people, like, you know, how are you supposed to get, you know, you know, ask questions to the pastor or whatever, you know what I mean, so, I don't know, I, I, I'm more of a fan of, like, you know, smaller churches and stuff like that, because, yeah, your, your mega churches, they always promote, you know, small groups, and then, you know what I mean, so, I mean, yeah, you have fellowship with others, but it's, you know I mean, like, I don't know, I, I, I just, I, I've never really been to mega churches, and, you know, Bible has so much to say about, you know, money and, you know, covetousness and all that, and, you know, make merchandise out of you, and, you know, that, that kind of thing, and so many un unbelievers see that stuff, too, you know, it's not, uh, you know, so many jokes out there, and, and, and that, you know, we're all, you know, Christians are, you know, we represent God here on earth, you know, and, you know, and unbelievers see a lot of, you know, false, you know, professing Christians do this stuff, and it's really, I don't know, it, it, it sucks for the, you know, individuals who are deceived by that, you know, and, you know, we need, we, we should pray for these people, because a lot of people are, you know, people say church hurt, you know, kind of thing, so, and it happens, yeah, like, and, it, and it's not right, like, the, the, you know, preachers who have, you know, these, you know, planes and, you know, mansions you see, you know, like, they deceive a lot of people, and, and a lot of people see that as unbelievers, and they're like, you know, they scoff, and do they take it out on that, you know, pastor or preacher? A little bit, yeah, but mainly their aim is at God, and then, it, you know, they bring God down, I mean, not really, but you know, in, in their minds, they, you know, blame that on God, like, oh, you know, re, you know, this is religion, you know, you can have it, you know, kind of thing, like, I don't know, it, it, it's sad, like, it really is, and, you know, it's the state of the church that, you know, that, that we're in, like, you know, things have gone, you know, downhill so far, and, you know, that's why many believe we're in the end times, so, uh, this video is getting a little long, so I'll cut it there. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Hey, it's the Shane Point to the Word. Um, this is part four of After Salvation, Now What? So, like I was saying, a lot of things will start changing. Um, one thing, like, for instance, like my Facebook uh, account. So you figure, yeah, seven years ago when God saved me, my friends list is a lot different now than it was back then. So, for an individual to, you know, basically have like a 180 and start posting things that are completely foreign <laughs> to your friends and family, you're going to get a lot of backlash. Um, so that's one thing you can, you know, basically count on and, a, you know, a difficult thing that you know, you'll endure through, um, so, 
basically, you know, since you have so many unbelievers as friends and family, um, you know, you, you'll likewise get a lot of resistance. And so, um, I remember, like, so years and years ago, I think maybe 11 or 12, um, like, I, I was, you know, in, a, like, a band and stuff, and um, I had, like, these band members, and all of a sudden, I, I started posting, I, I don't remember what the original post was, but I posted something to the effect of, you know, basically homosexuality, you know, it's, uh, it's a, you know, an abomination in, you know, God's eyes, you know, it's sinful, um, and that's something that God can change. You know, an individual like that um, who struggles with that uh, uh, particular sin um, and you know I, I now have you know like Facebook friends who you know God has saved and you know now they you know aren't practicing homosexuals you know um, one I know I think is like engaged you know to a girl now and you know what I mean so like you know, God can change you, it's, you know, just like I've said in other videos, like, you know, it's not just homosexuality, or, you know, it's a whole bunch of sins, like, God can, you know, change you in so many, you know, different ways, you know, just because I didn't go through that doesn't, you know, I mean, like, you know, other, others have, and I praise God for what he's done, you know, in their lives, and so, anyway, going back, um, one of the band members, uh, was very, you know, sympathetic to, um, you know, LGBT, you know, that, that kind of thing, and so, um, so once I put that, like, he, what, he, like, went off on me, and he was basically saying how, um, <coughs> sorry about that, um, he was basically saying how, you know, what, so they don't have rights, you know what I mean, so, like, he, you know, just started going after me, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I said something to the effect of, like, what rights are you talking about? Like, I just, I, and I even put in that message, like, I just want to, you know, make sure we're talking about the same thing. I don't want to, you know, talk past each other, because sometimes when, you know, two individuals have, you know, different definitions of stuff, you know, we're not talking about the same thing, you know, we have to define our words, and so I remember saying, like, what, what, you know, exactly what rights are you talking about, and, you know, I don't want to talk past each other, and another individual commented, like, he's like, see, right there, if, if he has to ask what rights, like, you know, he's, I don't remember what he said, but, you know, basically insane, or, you know, that, like, that proves it, that, that proves it right there, like, if he has to ask, you know what I mean, so, and that was another one of my friends who said that, so, like, I was, like, if you're gonna stand for what God's word says, like, you're, you're gonna face resistance, um, and so, the other friend who initially asked that question was who, I, you know, was my band member, and, uh, so he basically ended up saying, you know, like you can't, um, I can't remember the word you said, but basically something to the effect of, like, you know, you can't, um, I think tolerate, I, th I think he used the word tolerate, you know, he's like, if you can't tolerate, you know, these people, then I don't even want to be friends with you, and he unfriended me, and, like, I was, like, you know, taken aback, because, like, that was one, um, probably... I mean, I don't know, it's, it's bittersweet because, like, it's, you, you, once you're changed, like, you're, you know what I mean, like, you, you understand what's gonna happen, you know what I mean? It's like, you understand people are gonna, you know, disagree with you and, you know, people that you, you know, had fellowship with before, you know, they're probably gonna fall away, and so... Like, I, I, you know, kind of anticipated that happening, but, like, once that happened, you know what I mean, it's completely different when it actually happens to you than, you know, if you just think it, you know, through in your head. So, like, that really took, you know, took me back, like, you know, wow. And so, 
I think the other person like on front of me too. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but yeah, that's a lot. You know, you'll get a lot of resistance because your friends list. You know, you basically, you know, you're going to enemy territory kind of thing because like, yeah, you know I mean like, all these people who, you know, are so tolerant and coexist, aren't really. You know, they won't really tolerate you as a Christian, um, but you're supposed to tolerate them, which. I don't know, like, I don't want to get into that, like, you know, that kind of mentality, like, I don't want to, you know, oh, it's so unfair, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, I, I, I'll just, you know, say that and drop it, because I don't want to get more into that, like, a life with Christ is awesome, like, I, I, I don't mean to say that, um, you know, oh, woe is me, you know, this life is so unfair, I don't, I don't mean to say that. So, yeah, so that all happened, but that, that's stuff you can expect, and, um, I'm actually gonna end this now and go to another part, because I think this video would be too long, but I'm going to make another video, um, regarding this very thing, because basically everyone who says they're a Christian aren't always a Christian. And that's kind of that naive kind of thinking where, you know, if there's a, you know, cross on a church or, you know what I mean, oh, there's a pastor, so he must be Christian, you know what I mean, or that kind of thing. It's like what I was saying before, you know, you can, it's like you're, you... Hey, it's a shame point to the word. Um, sorry about the last one, uh, cut out, um... My memory is getting a little low. I have to like delete like every video before I, I post a new one. So I apologize about that. Um, so this will be uh, part uh, six of I'm a Christian, now what? Um, so uh, I was leaning off on like, you know, you kind of, you're kind of naive to when, you know, you're just, you know, saved. So you know, you look around and, you know, people are professing Christians and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I believe, I believe in God and, you know, I'm spiritual. So, you know, you, ever, you know, anyone can say whatever they want. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean it's true. Um, so like, I remember in like the old, like left behind books, um, they said like, once a person was saved, they had like a, a, <laughs> like a cross on their forehead you know, to, like, indicate, oh, you know, he's saved, you know, for sure, 100%, so it's not that easy now, like, I, I remember, like, you know, Jesus saying, you know, you'll know them by their fruits, so, um, and so, like, um, I wanted to also explain, um, our family is, uh, expecting, um, a little girl, and so, uh, in August, and the reason I mention that is because um, uh, we're actually moving into our first house. So the place we're moving to is, like, we live in Wisconsin, so it, it's a place called New London. And so I've been looking for, like, church buildings and stuff. And um, so I, like, went through Google yesterday at work, and this is, like, you know, a perfect example for, um, you know, this series or playlist um, so, the reason I mention that is because, like, I, I searched Google, and I looked at, you know, a whole bunch of different, um, you know, church buildings, and so, you know, I, I was, I'm going through the list, and, like, God will give you discernment, and, you know, he'll, you know, let you understand, you know, uh, you know, denominations, and, um, you know, different things like that, um, and he'll, you know, give you that discernment. So, like, when I scanned through that list yesterday, you know, I already, you know, thanks to God, like, for the information he's given me, like, I can kind of scan down that list, and, you know, it's, you know, like, for instance, it would say, oh, you know, Methodist Church, so I'm like, okay, no, uh, that said, like, Assemblies of God, you know, I'm going to scroll past, okay, no, don't want that one, and so, like, Lutheran Church, no, uh, you know, Methodist, you know, keep going down. I'm like, okay, I don't want any part of those. And then it said, like, 
you know, like United Church of Christ or something. So I am like, okay, what's that? And I look it up, and I guess it's like uh, Protestants, like Protestantism. And if you don't know what that is, uh, Protestants are like so hundreds of years ago, like in the Catholic Church, um, like their whole system, uh, they like got out of that. And they like basically started their own, you know, churches. So, like an example of that is like Lutherans and like uh, Calvinists. So like John Calvin and uh, Martin Luther. So I guess that yeah, it's like a the United Church of Christ or something. It's you know, it could be a Lutheran or Calvinist. I'm like, okay, no. Um, keep scrolling down. There's like some I think it's Victory Church or something like that. So like that one, you know, what I mean like. There's no buzzwords. There was no, you know, indication of what that was. So I'm like, okay, I went on their website. I, you know, went on their sermons. And I started listening to it. And this guy was, like, talking basically a whole bunch of, like, social like social issues. And, like, you know, oh, you know, you got to, you know, you guys need to attend, like, the school board. And, you know, like, you know, see what's going on with, you know, like, keep tabs on that because, you know, they're teaching our children, you know, stuff and like, you know, they're calling, you know, different pro, you know, pronouns or, you know, he, she, whatever. And so he's like going through all this and like, yeah, there's, you know, a time and place for all that. But, you know, basically in a nutshell, all those social issues are, you know, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Like, it's, it's a distraction, like, it's like the old adage, like, you know, oh, the Titanic is, you know, is, is sinking, let's rearrange the, you know, uh, all the, you know, patio furniture and all that, so, you know what I mean, like, or deck, deck furniture, sorry, um, and so, uh, I apologize if you can hear, like, sleet, uh, it's like sleeting out right now as I'm driving, um, but yeah, so, like, He's talking about all these, like, social issues, and it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to go to, you know, church to learn about Jesus and, you know, praise Him and, you know, learn and stuff like that. I don't, I don't want to go there for, like, social issues. Like, I could, you know what I mean? Like, I could watch news or something, you know what I mean, if I want to do that. So, I don't know, like, it's like Jesus said, like, you know what I mean? You like, go throughout the world, you know, preaching, you know, the gospel, not, you know, preaching you know, like, just fixing these little issues, like, I don't know, it's like such a distraction, and there's a bunch of distractions out there, um, so yeah, I, I didn't, you know, really care for that, plus he's, like, very sympathetic to, like, uh, Catholicism, and so, um, he was saying how, uh, he, I was, go uh, had a friend, uh, is a pastor friend, and he was saying how his pastor friend said, hey, I noticed at the end of your uh, service uh, that you never bless people. And, and the pastor, the guy I was listening to, he's like, oh, I, well, I've never been taught. And so ever since then, like, he was telling a story how, yeah, you know, before that, you know, people used to, you know, have like, you know, junky, clunky cars and, you know, and that dress the best, <laughs> like, uh, he's like, say, like, you know, they're blue collar or whatever, and he said, ever, you know, they started blessing people at the end of his sermons, and he's like, well, now, you know, people are coming up to me saying, oh, pastor, you know, I just got a raise, or pastor, I got a brand new car now, and, like, uh, he's equating it all to, you know what I mean, like, uh, just worldliness, like, like, the Bible says, you know, Paul is saying, you know, I've learned to be content, you know what I mean? Like, that's, and that's, I think he wrote that in, like, First Timothy or something. And I think that's the same chapter as, uh, uh, for a love of money is the root of all evil. It's, like, it's the same, <laughs> same context. So he's, like, saying, you know, we're supposed to be, um, you know, content with all our stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I have a car, I ha I'm driving to my job, you know what I mean? Like, we should be content with what we have. So, I don't know, that just, listening to that, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want anything to do with this. And so, you know, that I'm looking out of, you know, out of, like, 
um, other like you know towns like trying to you know find stuff there nothing like it is it's so like I, I don't promote like being like a lone wolf you know kind of Christian like I really would love to find you know uh, the church you know and to have fellowship but it is hard it's it's hard and so you know I if you guys, you know, find one, you know, wherever you guys are at, I, you know, I commend you, but, like, really just, you know, like I said, you know, really, you know, ground yourself in, um, you know, the foundation of Jesus and, you know, the Bible, and, you know, like, it's, it's a hard road, you know what I mean, like, it's, but, honestly, like, the, the change, the changes that happen in your life and around you, are well worth it, and you know Jesus is well worth it, and you know there's no comparison. So uh, I'll end it there. I, I, again, I apologize for the uh, camera, uh, like right out of memory. So all right, have a good day, guys. But hey, this is Shane. Point to the Word. Uh, this will be part six of after salvation. Um, and, and like actually part six, I think last time I said it was part six. So yeah, this whole series, I've been <laughs> being an amateur, like messing up everywhere. And uh, speaking of that, uh, speaking of messing up, um, I have to get that uh, verse for you guys that I forgot last time. Um, so, uh, was in uh, referring to like, uh, vain repetition, like, uh, just, you know, monotonous prayer. So that's in Matthew chapter six, verse seven. And Jesus is speaking, he said, But when you pray, use uh, not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up since I forgot last time. Um, and then also another verse while I'm, uh, in, you know, while we're in the book of Matthew. Uh, so one chapter later, uh, I was saying how, like, everyone who says, you know, they're a Christian, you know, a lot of people profess that they're Christians, but doesn't really, you know, make it so. Uh, so that's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And this is Jesus uh, speaking as well. It says, Not everyone that says, uh, says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So... And also, I think, in the book of John 6, uh, chapter 6, uh, it says, uh, the will of my Father is to believe uh, in the one that he sent. Uh, so, just to, uh, you know, mention that as well. So, um, yeah, I think this will be, like, the last video of this series, because, you know, I'm basically, you know, getting to the point where... <laughs> you know, whatever advice for what it's worth that I'm giving, um, you know, I, I'm already catching you guys up to, like, you know, the path I'm going, um, cause, like, I, you know what I mean, like, I'm still, you know, learning, I'm still, you know, reading the Bible and, you know, taking things away from it, uh, so, you know, I, I by no means, you know, arrived or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm still learning new things, like, you know what I mean, like, in the Bible, and also, you know, you know, there's deceptions too, so, like, for instance, like, I'm really learning about, like, um, you know, Buddhism, and, uh, you know, just stuff like that, that has to go with, like, New Age, um, and I do have, uh, like, a, in my playlist on my channel, you know, a uh, series about, like, New Age and, like, how I was, you know, kind of into that and how God saved me from that. Um, but, yeah, going, into, like, you know, back to New Age again, like, New Age just, like, pulls a whole bunch of stuff from different, um, you know, religions, like Hinduism or, you know, Buddhism, primarily Hinduism, though. Um, but, yeah, so, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm learning about, you know, even new stuff about, you know, Buddhism today. Um, you know, basically that they don't believe in sin and they don't believe in salvation. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, it's, it's all, you know, based on the foundation of Jesus Christ, like, and the Bible, you know, that once you have that all figured out, um, you know, then you'll, 
you know, you can, from there, um, really, you know, get these buzzwords and stuff, and then all these, you know, deceptions out there, um, you know, you can figure that stuff out, um, you know, kind of, and have that discernment from God, as I've been talking about. Um, so, I think the last uh, few verses I'm going to read uh, come through Matthew 13, so, yeah, basically all this stuff is in the book of Matthew. Um, so then, uh, this is going to be talking about Jesus, and he's going to uh, tell a parable, and it starts in Matthew chapter 13, verse 3. And it says, And he spake many things unto um, them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, you know, planted, uh, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up and devoured them up. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and uh, they sprung up because uh, they had no deepness of the earth. So there's no you know, depth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell onto good ground and brought forth fruit, uh, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And they said, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. And then the disciples came and said unto him, uh, Why do you speak uh, unto them in parables? So I'm going to, uh, later on in that chapter, Jesus um, actually like tells them uh, what's happening. So um, now he's going to actually uh, like tell them the explanation of all that. Which is very helpful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's gonna start um, in. I'll, I'll start in chap or, yeah, chapter thirteen, verse seventeen. So it says, "For verily or truly I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and you have uh, and have not seen them." So he's saying the prophets never saw them. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. And so now it's going to start, you know, explain the parable uh, that Jesus spoke in those verses. So now he says uh, in uh, verse 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one hears the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then comes the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Uh, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. So he basically talks about like four different, you know, ways. And so he's like going one by one. But he uh, that receives the seed in the stony places, the same as he that hears the word and uh, with joy receives it. Uh, yet uh, has he, you know, no root in himself, but, you know, endures for a little while. Uh, for when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, by and by he is offended. Um, so that I think that one's like super important because um, that uh, my, I don't know, my my belief is that this parable like speaks so much about professing Christians in this world. Like that's just my understanding of it. Um, and so, like I I don't know like reading the, these uh, parable like really, I don't know, it's, it's mind-blowing to me, because, you know, this happens a lot, and, and I know of so many professing Christians who, you know, call themselves Christians, but, you know what I mean, like, they, they don't have any root, you know what I mean, so, like Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. Alright, so continuing on, um, this is the third one now, uh, in verse 22, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word. And the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. And now it talks about the fourth and good one uh, in, in verse 23. But he that receives seed unto the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth uh, 160 and some 30 fold. All right, so... Yeah, I honestly, like, that in a nutshell really explains just the types of professing Christians that we have around us. Like, you know, there's so many, 
people who, you know, are offended. And, you know, like once persecution or tribulation comes, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so, I don't know, like, I, I, I really see that. So, and I don't know. So, you know, we should pray to, you know, receive, yeah, on good ground, you know what I mean? Like, receive the word and, you know, to understand it and to have discernment and wisdom from God. Like, you know, that's something we should be praying for. So, um, like I said, that'll probably be the last video of this series. So, I uh, hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, it's a shame point to the word. Um, so a while ago I had a series called I'm a Christian Now What? Um, and so um, I wanted to add this to it because I didn't really know what other uh, like category to put it in. And so uh, this like you know fits the most for that kind of like series like I'm a Christian Now What? Um, so um, if you haven't like read like my testimony or whatever. Um, uh, that I do have that, like, uh, you know, on our playlist and stuff, um, so, like, that'll tell a lot more, um, but basically, um, like, before God saved me, um, in, like, the year 2015, so, like, seven years ago, um, I mean, I, I'm just heavy in the, like, music, and so, I, I love music a lot, I've really, like, kind of, like, gone away from it, um, like, I was, like, seriously, like, obsessed or, you know, addicted or whatever you want to call it, uh, with, like, music, and so, um, I just, like, constantly, you know, just listen to, you know, uh, you know, songs or, you know, live performances, you know, whatnot, um, and so, I, the reason I, I I'm getting at all this is, um, like, I have such, like, a <laughs> useless just knowledge of, like, you know what I mean, like, lyrics and just, you know what I mean, stuff I, you know, wish I could forget and, you know, utilize with, you know, information that matters. But, um, anyway, so, I, I've been, like, kind of, you know, I've touched on, like, the Hillsong thing, and I apologize for, you know, just being all over the place. Um, I'll try to, like, link all my ideas together eventually. Um, but like, you know, the Hillsong Bethel kind of stuff, I, I get them mixed up, but basically like the, you know, Carl Lentz, you know, the allegations with that, I think that's Hillsong. Um, I apologize, I get the two mixed up all the time. Um, yeah, so like, you know, the Carl Lentz kind of thing, you know, the sexual allegations and, you know what I mean, just stuff like that. And, you know, so, you know, basically the world sees, you know, a Christian quote unquote, you know, whether it be a Christian or not, you know, they still label them the same way, um, you know, and so they see, like, you know, this hypocrisy, and, you know what I mean, like, you talk to an atheist, and, you know, that's all, you know, they talk about, like, yeah, you know, I, you know, Christians are hypocrites, and, you know what I mean, like, the old, you know, adage, like, oh, I, I love your Jesus, but I, I hate your Christians kind of thing, you know what I mean, so it, it all kind of, you know, ties together with that, so, Anyway, back to, like, you know, like, the Carl Lentz, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know what happened, so I, I just, I'm going off of, you know, what was reported, so I don't want to assume, but, you know, allegedly, you know, he basically, you know, uh, had, I, was, I don't know, if, I don't know if it was an affair or just, you know, um, yeah, I want to say it was an affair or maybe, like, some kind of stuff where, you know, it was inappropriate or, you know, even, like, you know, the other guy, the uh, head guy, you know what I mean, so it, it's all over the place, um, and so, you know, you got, like, you know, a Christian, you know, uh, you know, quote, unquote, um, you know, basically, you know, being immoral, or, you know, you know, fornicating, that kind of thing, and so, you know, what I mean, like, the world sees that, and, you know, they laugh at it, so going back, <laughs> taking that, going back to, like, my music foundation, I grew up loving Ozzy Osbourne, like Black Sabbath Ozzy Osbourne, I just, he, he was my favorite, and like, now that's insane to me that, you know what I mean, like, I don't know, you, you think of like, you know, different rock bands, and 
you know what I mean? Like, it's like, now, now that I'm a Christian, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like I, I had the, that, that's the one I had to like, you know what I mean? So, anyway, um, there's a song that Ozzy made in 1988, I believe it was, called Miracle Man. And so, you know, I loved Ozzy's music, and, like, I, I, would, I would buy his CDs and, like, you know, listen to the live stuff, and he keep, like, I don't know, like, this song Miracle Man, like, I didn't really think it was that great of a song, like, you know, from a fleshly, like, I, I, I have to, you know what I mean, like, jump back to my old self just to kind of, you know, think the way I thought back then, but... You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't think it was that great of a song. Like, there are so many other songs out there that I thought were, uh, you know, so much better. And yet, he kept, like, promoting this one. And so, I don't know. Like, I just... A lot of times, I'd, I'd skip over it. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't really care for the song. And so, anyway, I want to go over the lyrics because back then, that song, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, like, I don't really... Like, now it's crazy. Like, I, I didn't really, like, listen to the lyrics that much. Like, I knew them. Like, I could, you know, because I yeah, had so much repetition. Like, you know what I mean, I listened to the songs so often. Like, I knew them by heart, but I never really thought them through, if that makes sense. So, um, I want to read the lyrics to you guys, and then I want to go over them. Because now I understand, like, basically what you know, it's all about, um, so, this is his lyrics, I'm happy, you know, there's no swearing in here, um, so, I'm looking for a miracle man that tells me no lies, I'm looking for a miracle man who's not in disguise, I don't know where he'll come from, and I don't know where he's been, but he's not our Jimmy Sinner, because he's so obscene, um, and then, like, of course, this miracle man got busted. Um, and so, you know, it keeps going over and over. Um, and so, the second verse is, Today I saw a miracle man on TV crying. Such a hypocritical man. Born again dying. Uh, he don't know where he's going, but we know just where he's been. Was our little Jimmy Sinner that I saw on the screen. And Miracle Man got busted over and over. Um, the devil, in the third verse, is a devil with a crucifix, brimstone and fire. He needs another carnal fix to take him higher and higher. Now Jimmy, he got busted with his pants down. Repent, ye wretched sinners, self-righteous clown. And then it you know, goes... You know, Miracle Man got busted, you know, like, ten more times. So, I never understood, like... I just figured this is some guy that, like, Ozzy didn't like. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And so, I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? But now that, like, God has saved me, and now, you know what I mean? Like, I was born in 89. The song came out, I think, in, like, 88. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm try I am had to backtrack a lot to kind of, you know, figure all this stuff out. So, like, back then, you know, it was like, you know, TV preachers, you know, televangelists and stuff were, like, you know, so popular. And, I mean, to an extent, you know, depending on the audience, you know, they still are. Now, excuse my hair, by the way. I'm <laughs> just getting out of work. Um, anyway, so, like, um, yeah, so, like, that was, you know, TV, you know, televangelists were, like, crazy popular. So anyway, there's this guy named Jimmy Swaggart. So that's the Jimmy that uh, Ozzy is referring to. And so um, Jimmy Swaggart uh, basically um, uh, he, he got uh, well, first off, uh, let me back up. So, and I, I don't know, like uh, I you know it, it sucks because like I don't know, so, yeah, never mind, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just explain the story and go from there. So Jimmy Swagger uh, was married, um, and then alleged, well, I mean, he didn't, so he he confessed that he had sinned. 
and that was at the height of um, uh, basically getting caught uh, allegedly with like a prostitute. So, and so the, yeah, like that went on, you know, uh, like the news that you know uh, he had basically been caught. So what happened? Uh, was that he had met with this like prostitute? Uh, she claims about twenty to twenty-five times for a, a roughly about a year. Now, yeah, I mean, like I don't have all the details, so I'm just you know, I, you know, saying allegedly, uh, a, you know, a few times. So um, Jimmy Swagger, who uh, was like, you know, crazy big, you know, televangelist uh, with um, Assemblies of God, um, you know. Uh, denomination, uh, so he basically, like, repented, um, uh, in, with, with tears, um, and, he, you know, it, it at his, you know, church, uh, and all that, and, like, it was, um, you know, basically, like, you know, you can, you can look up on YouTube, like, you know, it's all there, um, and so, like, it, it's weird, too, because, like, like, he said it, and, like, his wife is, like, in the crowd, and, like, so he, like, apologizes, and his wife, like, you know, kind of nods, like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But So, anyway, um, then going back to what I was going to say, like, you know, and I don't know where he's at now. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I pray, I, th I believe he's still alive. Um, I, you know, I pray that, you know, he truly repented, and, you know what I mean? And so, but the thing is, the damage is done. You know what I mean? Like, so... You know what I mean? Like, so Jimmy Swagger, he, you know, um, did, you know, did these things. And I, I guess, so from what I hear is, like, he, he got he got this one, uh, another Assemblies of God, like, preacher. Like, he got uh, um, basically busted, uh, like, the same, same thing. And so, so Jimmy Swagger got him busted, apparently. Like, uh, and so like, in vengeance, uh, you know, which, you know, in Bible, you know, vengeance is mine, I'll, I will repay, saith the Lord. So, in vengeance, like, this guy got Jimmy Swagger, you know, and that's where, you know, kind of Ozzy is saying, you know, hypocritical man, because, you know, he, he's preaching this first off, you know, I mean, like, you know, he's, he's a preacher, so obviously, you know, Bible says, you know, you know, lusting is wrong, adultery, you know, et cetera, et cetera, fornication, you know, it's all wrong. So, but then, like, he's kind of, you know, hypocrite and, you know, like, both because, like, so he was, um, Jimmy Swaggart was defending a guy named Jim Baker. So if you ever, if you guys ever hear, like, you know, oh, the, you know, the pastor, you know, ran away with his, his wife with his secretary kind of thing. Like, I don't mean to laugh, but, like, you know, that, that come that, that, I think that, that comes from, like, you know, what Jim Baker did. So Jim Baker was, like, you know, a pastor or whatever. And he basically like ran off of the secretary kind of thing. So, um, and so, and, and with him too, like I, I pray that he repents too. I, I believe he's still alive. And you know what I mean? I, I really do pray that, you know, they both repent and, you know, um, that, you know, they're saved. Um, basically the damage is done there. So, you know what I mean? And then Ozzy, like, you know what I mean? He, he like that was at the height of Ozzy's career, like, you know, 1988, like, um, like, he had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, popular music that, you know, came out around that time. And so, you know, you know what I mean? So, you got all these, you know, these three, you know, three people or, you know, two, three people, you know, they're so influential, you know what I mean? And so, like, you know, the damage is done. Like, so many people have heard about this and that's, an, you know, impacted them in a negative way. And so, um, I want to give one more example, um with music so you guys have probably heard of like phil collins you know from genesis and all that um so he had a song and this song is more of like a parody so um this had to do and it, it I, th I think this came out in 1992 uh oh i'm sorry 1991 um and so um he was basically um because of what happened and this is a good um uh whatchamacallit um I'm forgetting uh, words right now. There's a word I want to use, but I can't think of it. Um, to basically bounce off of, you know, what I just said, you know, about Ozzy and Jimmy Swagger and all that. So, um, 
I looked up on the internet about the song with uh, Phil Collins and uh, with Genesis, um, and he uh, they wrote a song called Jesus He Knows Me, and so that is basically like a parody about like televangelists, um, and so Phil like basically Ozzy is talking about like this person, you know what I mean? Like you know Miracle Man. The song's about a miracle man, uh, but the. Genesis, uh, Phil Collins song, Jesus He Knows Me, this is like pretending he's the, you know, televangelist kind of thing, so, uh, or kind of person, so I kind of want to, you know, give you that before I give you the lyrics and stuff, but it says that, um, uh, his song was released during a period where, uh, Jimmy Swagger, Robert Tilton, and Jim Baker were, you know, um, you know, basically, you know, had these, you know, issues, and so, um, the song Jesus He Knows Me um, was basically uh, about this guy named Ernest Angley um, and so he's like another uh, televangelist I guess and so um, and I guess I don't, know, I don't know if this is true it's kind of funny but um, I guess um, like this Ernest guy was like um, happy about like, or not happy but like he was like, he didn't realize that this was, like, a parody about him, and he was, like, pleased with it, so I think he was trying to, you know, kind of, I mean, you can't, you know, if you're angry about it, you know, it's, you know, just gonna feed the fire, so anyway, um, the song, Jesus He Knows Me, uh, these are the lyrics, uh, do you see, uh, uh, the face on the TV screen coming at you every Sunday, see the face on the billboard? Uh, well, that man is me. Uh, on the cover of a magazine, there's no question why I am smiling. You buy a piece of paradise, you buy a piece of me. Um, I'll get you everything you wanted, I'll get you everything you need. Uh, you don't need to believe in hereafter, just believe in me. Because um, Jesus, he knows me and he knows I'm right. I've been talking to Jesus all my life. Oh, yes, he knows me. Um, he knows I'm right. Uh, well, he's been telling me everything is all right. Um, I believe in a family with my ever-loving wife beside me, but she don't know about my girlfriend or the man I met last night. Do you believe in God? Because that is uh, what I'm selling. Uh, and if you want to get to heaven, well, I'll see you right. Um, you won't ever have to leave your house or get out of your chair. You don't even have to touch that dial because I'm everywhere. And it goes, you know, Jesus, he knows me. He knows I'm right. You know, that chorus. Um, and they said, won't find me practicing what I'm preaching. Won't find me making no sacrifice. But I can get you a pocket full of miracles. Uh, if you promise uh, to be good, try to be nice. God will take good care of you. Um, well, just do as I say, don't, uh, do as I do. Uh, and then verse three is, well, I'm counting my blessings as I found true happiness because I'm a, I'm a getting richer day by day. You can find me in the phone book. Just call my toll free number. You can do it any way you want. Just do it right away. Um, and it says, and there will be no doubt in your mind. You'll believe everything I'm saying. If you want to get closer to him, get on your knees and start praying. Or I'm sorry, paying. <laughs> and yeah, that's the, you know, the joke. Uh, uh, start paying. Um, and then it goes back to, you know, because Jesus he knows me, he knows I'm right and all that. So um, anyway, yeah, so I wanted to, you know, get that one too. And basically, you know, a picture is worth a, you know, a thousand words kind of thing. So in uh, Phil Collins and Genesis, like uh, the, their music video, like he's, you know, dressed up as, you know, a televangelist and they have like, you know, the, like a, basically like a telethon and they have like the money, like number and it goes to like $18 million and just, I don't know. Anyway, so the point of this whole video that I'm trying to get across is uh, just be aware um, that, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not saying, you know, that you're going to be popular and, you know, all that and you're going to have, you know, such great influence. I, you know, I'm not, I, you know, not every, 
an everyday, you know, person, just a normal kind of person, you're not going to have that kind of influence. Like, you know, Phil Collins, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, Jimmy Swagger, you know, all, you know, Jim Baker, all those kind of people, um, or even Carl Lentz. But I, so I realize that, but, you know, at the same time, I do want to, you know, point out that, hey, you know, people are watching and I, I just want to basically, you know, say all that, to say this, that, you know, basically just, you know, I, like keep in your word, keep in the Bible. Um, you know, I really encourage that, you know, keep up in prayer. Um, and, you know what I mean? Like just, you know, don't, don't be hypocritical at, at all. Um, and like y you want to, you practice what you're preaching kind of thing. And so, you know, I really want to, you know, encourage people in that and that, you know, people are looking, um, and, you know, just to be aware, you know, aware of that. And, you know, I want to encourage you guys to keep in your word and, um, you know, keep studying, uh, keep praying. Um, and that's basically it. Um, hope you guys have a great night.